everyone welcome to another episode in use it or lose it and today i am looking at all of the charcoal products that i have in my stash so before i start playing with them i just want to show you what i have so i think kind of the most classical i mean charcoal has been used by artists for eons and obviously it's a very like natural material and I think this is probably the most traditional way that people use charcoal and uh, these ones are called vine charcoal sticks this is from Jackson's and you can find these in like different kinds of um, like firmness softer ones harder ones smaller one bigger ones uh, but yeah, this this I would say is kind of the traditional way of using it. It looks like this. It's pretty fragile. Um, also, again, depends on the the how firm it is. But it's a very just like a very organic way of sketching, and this is really for me where the this kind of product shines. That just that quality of the line is so expressive and it really appeals to me. However, other qualities of it uh, appeal less to me. So, <laughs> so that is one form, um, vine charcoal. Then we have pencils and I'm not even sure this is a charcoal pencil, maybe just like Yeah, it could be. It's called Conte à Paris. <laughs> uh, Sandrine, well, you can, I'll let you read it, whatever that is. And I don't know where I picked up, like just probably picked it up in an art store. Um, it kind of has the feel of charcoal, but I never really fell in love with it. And this one is more a traditional uh, charcoal pencils. This one is soft. It's from a company called Greta Color, and this is an Austrian company, which as far as I know is nothing to write home about. And yeah, the products are not that great. Then we have this new product from Schminke. I mean, it's new for Schminke, um, which is called Liquid Charcoal. There's another brand, I think it's called Nitram, if I remember the name correctly, that makes this. I haven't used it again and I forgot I just poured it into a pan because I want to see how it dries and if it rewets uh, but that definitely would be a more appealing form of charcoal for me to use because yeah one of my issues is how dirty it is that's why I also really prefer the pencils and my favorite from all of these and the one I use the most are the Derwent tinted charcoal pencils I have the 12 set I think there are more but if I'm not mistaken, but I'm pretty happy with the, with the color here. I have a dedicated video and these are just beautiful. This to me is a perfect way of using charcoal because it is cleaner, you know, in um, pencil form and because it is tinted. So I do get a little bit of color here. The white is quite useless. Um, so, you know, if you want to try, I would just like buy open stock, like pick one or two. Uh, my favorite colors are lavender and then this yellow one called sand. Uh, I think those two are my favorite. And of course they have um, just like other colors and black, I think there's black, something like black. Uh, all very muted as you can see, which, you know, if you want something that is similar uh, in the way that it applies and kind of the way it feels, then go for like pastel pencils. That is kind of a similar thing and those come in all kinds of colors, um, very bright colors. As you can see, these are the Carbothello. But yeah, this is a very kind of natural medium and the colors are also very muted. Now, quite an interesting product also from Derwent is the XL Charcoal and these are charcoal blocks and these are really fun this is to me like the kind of product that kind of makes me feel like an artist 
they are messy but Derwent actually offers um, kind of a sleeve that you can put on it so it can get a little less messy um, I usually use these just with like a wet brush I just you can very easily pick up the charcoal so as you can see it's it's very very easy to use them like that and that's my preferred way you can see how beautiful they are activated wa with water all charcoal is um, you know water soluble you can move it around with water uh, which is which is you know it's a nice quality because you can create kind of you know this kind of artwork like get really messy with it lately I have been kind of more into products that are not water soluble but um, I might just use this as a watercolor because you do get that wonderful um, texture and granulation so yeah this is what I have I I have I really haven't used I used to use this a lot more and kind of uh, stepped away from it because I, I've just been drawn to other materials. But I'm excited to play around with these and see how they work. Uh, if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Irit. I'm a watercolor artist and I also use mixed media. But my main focus and the product I use in almost all of my paintings is watercolor. So all the products that I'm testing in this series, there are already a few episodes up on my channel have to work with watercolor uh, for me to, you know, like them and use them and enjoy them. So this is the focus of the series. If you want dedicated reviews, I do have, uh, I think, like a swatching of this one. And, you know, YouTube is the place to go. But here, I, I want to see how it works with watercolors. So let's start playing. Okay, so I fast forwarded it a bit and I do apologize for the very uh, strong sunlight, but it is the Easter vacation here and my kids are always home. So once I got uh, a few minutes to paint, I had to take advantage of it. And uh, basically you'll see me working here on two sketches or studies or paintings or whatever you want to call them. And I just want to clarify before I get into my uh, thoughts about this is that my opinions here are extremely specific and like very, very personal to my needs, my process and my preferences. And I hope that I can explain what I like and what I don't like. Sometimes it's merely the color choices. Um, you know, charcoal by its nature is usually like very either black or very, very muted. And I'm currently just not using a lot of um, black for line work or even any kind of like gray or black watercolor. I really prefer my neutrals to be more of like a semi muted kind of color to start working with. So very, very muted pinks or purples or greens or something like this. And and that doesn't say anything about if this is a good or bad product. So I think just in general right now, I'm at a place where I don't really see charcoal kind of fitting into my regular rotation. But it's always good to pick up um, neglected uh products in your stash and kind of see, remind yourself how they work and what they do. So let's let's start with the the downside um, so one thing I mentioned is color really right now uh, I'm the the most enjoyable product here for me color wise were the um, pencils from Derwent and also these extra large blocks in the more kind of you know semi muted colors so they have like this kind of an ochre color or a color that really reminds me of the violet hematite from Daniel Smith. So those I felt had more of a place 
as opposed to all the grays and blacks. Having said that, I did really, really like the kind of line work that I got using the vine, the soft vine charcoal the, from Jackson's, the one in the paper roll. Uh, there was something very appealing um, using that for me. I actually liked it a bit better than the pencils. And I've used these pencils quite a bit and they were very, they were a favorite and I think they're great. However, the way that they apply a pr product is very similar to uh, soft pastels or pastel pencils. It's just, you know, the nature of, you know, also charcoal. It's just like this chalky product and you get that dusty effect, uh, which you can love or hate. I obviously hate the messy part of it. And with all of these, you know, if you use oil pastels, if you use uh, soft pastels, hard pastels, charcoal, all these things, if you want things to stay put, you have to fix them, which I have to say for me, it's also like every extra step is a problem for me. <laughs> I'm just super lazy with these things. I'm super messy as it is. And everything that gives me like something else to do or that um, makes more of a mess, you know, I just can't, I can't just pile um, paintings because it'll move the product that needs fixing. Um, yeah, that's that's a problem for me. That's like a, a really a good reason to avoid using these products. But there are a lot of th effects and qualities that you just can't get from watercolors. And I am, I think at the core, um, a mixed media, like heavily leaning towards watercolors. That's always in my artwork and pretty much the main product but I do love combining it with other products so yeah one thing I want to say also here about the liquid um, charcoal from from Schminke is that as you can see you can absolutely squeeze it into uh, a pan and use it as watercolor it rewets beautifully and uh, I think for me for sure if I use this product it'll be in that form. So just squeeze it into a pan and uh, insert it into my palette alongside my regular watercolors. And you do get that nice effect. I have to check if it rubs off. All the other products, you know, the pencils, the vine, the uh, extra large blocks from Derwent, which are really, really lovely. I'm just swatching the colors a bit. This, that, that, um, violet umber color is particularly attractive. They all rub off, and I have to see if the if the Schminke one, um, if if it's rub off resistant, then that's a big plus. But still, the color is quite neutral for me. And as I said, I'm just not really into those uh, neutrals to start with. I kind of like mixing my own. So uh, that's just where I am with these and. Yeah, what can I tell you? It's it's not really a love story. So here I really tried to focus on the um, all the charcoal products. But now here in this part of the video, I'm trying to actually integrate them into a more, um, you know, like my usual use of other mediums. So because charcoal, I mean, it does... Uh, activate with water you can move it to various degrees it really depends on you know the kind of pencil and how you use it and how much water and how much you disturb it but it is a product that is water soluble and therefore I don't think that for me it makes a lot of sense to use it in my first layer and that's why I didn't do that in this uh, part of the demo so here I started with my go-to Calendash, Neocolor One, which are water resistant. Those are my favorite for that initial layer. And yeah, that's that's what I went with here, thinking that, you know, the charcoal would probably, if it works for me, it'll probably work as more of a last layer kind of product because it does move if you add water to it. And Right now I'm really into kind of brighter colors and I don't really want a product that will muddy up an area. Although even in my very colorful florals, usually the background is not very um, like bright in color. My backgrounds are usually quite muted. So for those, I can see how 
charcoal could work and that's mostly where I used it here not really in the the floral parts um, as for the watercolors that I'm using, you can see on the top left corner, the April color story. And I have to tell you that I, I admit that when I, I kind of, it kind of defeats the purpose, the way that I did the April color story. I mean, I do like all the colors there, but I can't say it was giving me all the feels like the March color story. However, I did find that the mixtures that I got from mixing my bright yellows. So the bright yellows in my palette are Nicolaso yellow and quinacridone gold, which is more of an orangey yellow. But mixing those with cobalt violet gave me really beautiful um, kind of semi-saturated. <laughs> so, so just slightly more muted corals and pinks. And that's kind of the, the other combo that I feel can take me there when before that I was usually mixing my um, Lucas Naples yellow red with bright pinks so, <coughs> excuse me so I don't really like uh, super vibrant oranges and that's why mixing something like bright rose or you know something like quinacridone rose or like a very bright transparent pink with a very bright transparent yellow it just doesn't give me the colors that I enjoy that's why I really like using the Naples yellow red uh, with bright pinks and now I discovered that I mean I kind of knew this but this was a really great way of focusing on it that cobalt violet gives me really beautiful somewhat muted um, kind of pinks and corals when I mix it with my bright yellows and the reason for that is that you know cobalt violet does have some blue in it I mean the pigment is just cobalt violet but just the color as it is you know it's like a, a bluish uh, pink if you will, and it also granulates. So that really creates um, special colors. And yeah, and that's that's why the, these color stories, I think, are so fun to work with. Um, you don't really have to think about, you know, if you come up with a story you really like, that's Ella's hand. Uh, you don't really have to think about what to use when you're painting, especially when I'm filming these videos and I'm focusing, I'm trying to focus on other products. I just have kind of my go-to color story, which I love. And um, it, let, it lets me really explore certain colors and kind of find those mixtures that I really, really love. The only issue that I have with Cobalt Violet is even the Rembrandt one, which is a, you know, a pretty good... Uh, one cobalt violet is a problematic <laughs> pigment it's still not as kind of juicy as i would like it to it's still a bit too much binder in it and yeah that sometimes it just makes it a little bit difficult to mix uh, a more intense color or to mix like a large amount of color just because i have to work hard to really get the intensity of the cobalt violet so here i'm using I've already laid down the Neocolor ones. I've already laid down an uh, initial layer of watercolors. And here I'm trying to include more of the charcoal products. And, you know, definitely the, um, the ink, not the ink tense, the Derwent extra large blocks of charcoal were uh, fun to use. And, you know, I felt like the transition between using them and watercolors is very smooth because I can use the same brush, I can use the same water. Uh, obviously, it will contaminate my water a little bit, but it is like a very friendly, uh, forgiving, you know, medium like watercolor, water soluble stuff that doesn't just dry and become, you know, and can ruin your brushes or anything like that, like acrylic mediums. So, or media. Um, so in that way, it does kind of work. Of course, that huge box of extra large blocks, you know, it just has these six colors. And the most appealing to me is the one that I just use. It's kind of that violet umber. And then the one next to it, it's kind of an ochre color. Those are the two that I'm most drawn to. And if they came up with little half pans filled with these or just you know a chunk of <laughs> of this charcoal <laughs> you know that would work really great but um as it is i think it i think you might enjoy this product if you really like to get messy if you like to sketch and play 
uh, on a bigger scale that I can see these blocks being kind of fun if you don't mind to get your hands dirty or wear gloves. All these things I do mind. I don't work um, very often on very on a very large scale. And yeah, I just I'm trying I'm trying to <laughs> Lily also wants to paint <laughs> on my desk. So I'm trying to make everything work. And yes, my soul died a little bit when she dipped into my cobalt steel. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, but that kid has like 20 watercolor palettes and this is the only one that I am trying to get her out of. So so there, I gave her one with Prima uh, paints, but yeah, of course it didn't have the exact shade that she wanted. Anyway, uh, back to the thing, back to charcoal. So I do like the product of the extra large charcoal blocks and I think it works well as a watercolor. I think it's a really, really affordable alternative to some of those very, um, you know, granulating Primatech uh, Daniel Smith colors. Uh, however, it does, you know, it moves around even when it's dry, the, the charcoal. So there's that and for that, I think watercolors win. Um, just because they don't move. Uh, but yeah, if you're aware of that, if you like this medium, of course you can just spray it with uh, a fixing spray and all these troubles will go away. But yeah, I really, <laughs> I like to make life uh, more difficult for myself. But yeah, so now I'm kind of adding accents and I had the Carbothello pastel pencils nearby, thanks to, again, the series. And I really noticed that just the colors of these are currently much more appealing to me. The experience of using them is very similar to charcoal. Uh, but the colors, you know, you can't compare, like, the range of colors of the Carbothello um, pastel pencils to the Derwent charcoal pencils. So... Um, you know, one has super bright colors that the charcoal pencils just don't have because of just the nature of the product. So uh, the experience is quite similar. The colors are very different and that really depends on your personal preferences. I think the charcoal pencils from Derwent are really great and I was really into them, I think, during the summer. So I'll probably go back at some point it's just you know a trend mood kind of situation uh, but right now i'm just drawn more to the bright colors maybe when winter comes again or something um or my fickle mind will change my fickle heart <laughs> will fall out of love <laughs> whatever i'm currently into then um yeah i think they're a great product it's just the pencils um, definitely a clean way of using charcoal, which I, it means a lot to me as a super messy person. So here I'm just enjoying uh, playing with watercolors. Um, as I said, it's Easter vacation. I don't have a lot of time to uh, paint and play. And this was just a fun opportunity. So I might revisit um, the charcoals. We'll see how it goes. But for now, I did like the vine charcoal and I did like the extra large blocks. Um, but when it came to the pencils, just because of the color, on color alone, I am currently leaning more towards the Carbothello pastel pencils. But I do think the Derwent one are a good product. And then the Schmincke liquid charcoal, I have to check if it rubs off and um, just use it a bit more to decide what I think about it. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you soon in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.